we will discuss what is logic design. See now we need to discuss is this logic design is the actual design or the logical how exactly the circuit operates we are going to be learning. So now we will discuss the logic design having only two levels. One is logic 0, another one is logic 1. See logic 0 is nothing but of plus 0 volts. Logic 1 is nothing but of plus 5 volts. Now if I write a clock pulse, so this is called a clock pulse. In this clock pulse, the low level, this logic 0 is also called as an low level. Logic 0 is called as an L logic low level and this logic 1 is called as an logic high level. In this case, this is called an a low level and this is called an high level. And this is called an rising edge and this is called an falling edge. This is a rising edge. This is called as a falling edge. See, so in this case, this is represented as 0 volts and this is represented as plus 5 volts. In any logic design, if the logic swings from logic 0 to logic 1 or logic 1 to logic 0, in case of TTL, transistor transistor logic, so in order to logic 0, the logic 0 is the range from 0 to 0 0.8 volts. Similarly, logic 1, logic 1, in this case, it is 2 to 5 volts in the input stage. In case of output stage, it is 2.7 to 5 volts. Similarly, if I talk about CMOS, in case of CMOS, the logic 0 represents with a 0 volts to 1.5 volts. And if I talk about logic 1, it starts with 3.5 to 5 volts. So this is the range it will swings from logic 0 to 1 or logic 1 to 0. So now we need to discuss what is logic design. See if I want to design a NOT gate. Now I will take an example of NOT gate. See how we are representing NOT gate. This is the NOT gate. This is called a logical symbol. Correct. Then in this logic symbol, see if I provide 0, if I provide here 0, I am getting 1. If I give 1, I will get 0. This is called a logic symbol. This symbol behaves like this. So this is very easy to digest anybody. If I say 0, I will get 1. If I give 1, I will get 0. So that's why it is called a logic diagram, a logic symbol, one which you use for the NOT gate. If anybody can understand this. It is very easy. As soon as I am seeing, I can able to interpret it what exactly it is. This is called logic design. But if I go one step lower, is this logic symbol or the logic design sits in the integrated circuit? No. One more level, if I go down, next we need to write an schematic design. The VDD. And this is the ground. And here I am getting the PMOS. Here I am getting the NMOS. This is my V in and this is my V out. And we know that this is the PMOS and this is the NMOS. And in this case, see here, if I provide 0 here, we know that PMOS get operated if I apply 0 to the gate and this will get on and I am getting direct path from VDD to output. So there I am getting logic high state it is nothing but of. So from low to high it will go to go to high. So here I am getting the high state. This is called plus 5 volts. So also called this is a logic 1. Similarly, if I force here, if I force here 0, so that point of time, if I force here now, I will force 1. If I force 1, obviously, it will get in off state and I am getting direct path from V out to ground. So automatically, 
the pulse get down from high to low. So here I am getting logic low level or we can say 0 volts or we are getting logic 0. So as soon as I am applying 1, I am getting 0. So this is the one more level down we are going and this is called a schematic diagram. See, is this schematic is sitting in the integrated circuit? No, this is not the one, isn't it? The integrated circuit, if I want to know, I need to go one more level down. So one more level down, what is that? It's called layout design. Based on this schematic, I can possible to construct the layout design. But this is quite difficult to understand all the branches. I mean, too, it is very easy to digest the electrical domain students, but where it is quite difficult for it, maybe if I take the mechanical, civil or uh, even computer science students sometimes it's quite difficult because inverter gate only two uh, the transistors ca comes it's quite easy but whereas if i consider the nand uh, the adder design subtractor design and all or if i take any alu design quite difficult for the computer science students uh, to digest so that's why see this digital logic design all the branch students will learn why because this is here we require only the logical thinking this is required for all the branches so that's why it is common for all the branches. <clears throat> the next, if I move to the one more level down, is called layout level design. And in the layout level design, so if I want to construct this inverter, so if I want to construct, this is an NMOS. For example, we know that how exactly the PMOS or the NMOS, this is the PMOS, it is having two P plus regions and one N substrate and this is the insulator and the gate and it is having, this is the structure and this is the channel. So here, so this is called an P diffusions, diffusions and we have one gate, see if I take this, this is the gate. The, this is one a geometrical structure, one which I am going to be representing for the NOT gate. This is geometrical structure sits in the integrated circuit. So if I talk about the next one is, the this is for NPMOS, what I am constructing. And similarly, if I want to construct for an NMOS, so this is for NMOS, this is NMOS, and this is the N diffuse. So this gate get extended. Why this gate get extended? Because, see, if you see this, gate gate extends <clears throat> this gate get extends till here this gate get extends see if you see this if you compare this see here p diffusion p diffusion see p diffusion either this side is there and over that over that see we are we have a gate structure but the, we can't able to show all the, the polysilicon oxide layers and all. Why? Because it comes under the fabrication level. So only in the design aspects, we can able to show only the structure. So now here P diffusion, P diffusion is there. Now what we need to do? So all the time, the, the bulk we are thinking that as the P substrate. So in order to distinguish that, we need to place an <coughs> one N well here. So now uh, it's quite difficult for you all to understand this, but I need to show how exactly it looks. Can you be able to digest in the lower semester level? So that's why we are introducing logic design. This logic design quite easy to understand and digest the how exactly the adder behaves, subtractor behaves, counter behaves and all or how ALU behaves. So now, so this is the first level in the next, in the higher semester and all you learning the schematic aspects and the layout aspects. So now if I want to show the See, for example, here I will put the contact and here I will put the contact and here I'm having a ground. So this will see here if I talk about in this case, this is source, drying, drying, gate, gate and the source. So in this case, if I say, if I say this is the drying, this is the drying, this is the source and this is the source. And this drying, drying get shorted and we are getting output. Similarly, the source of this is connected to ground as we seen here. And similarly, the source of the, the PMOS get connected to 
the BDD. This is called a layout design. A layout design of CMOS, complementary metal oxide semiconductor inverter for one NOT gate. This is the structure. This structure is very difficult to digest apart from the, the, the electrical domain students. So that's why, so in the, the lower level, we should always understand the logic design, how exactly the logic of the circuit, based on the logic, we are going to be implementing the logic diagram. <clears throat> now, so why in this uh, syllabus, we are going to be learning all the, the logic combinational circuits and the sequential circuit, but we should know where exactly we are using, why we need to learn now, for example, with the help of, we all know that if we, are, we need to design the adder with the help of the gates and we know that already structure, okay, beginning off of the introduction, we see what is there in the, the one bit adder, one inside the one bit adder and we are learning the uh, subtractor and in future we are learning uh, the counters. Marks, D marks, and all. But where we are using this combination or sequential circuit? So, if you consider, if I want to do any ALU design, arithmetic and logic unit, so I need all this, this all comes and sits here. So, then where exactly my ALU comes? We all know that ALU sits inside the processor. Again, the processor contains not only the ALU, it is having a control unit and a cache memory, isn't it? So this entire thing we designed with the help of integrated circuit. In this integrated circuit, we are using this layout design. This layout design is sits inside the processor, not actually the not not exactly the schematic, not exactly the symbol logical symbol this logical symbol only for our understanding aspects not this is not the actual implementation this is only a logical representation if you know very well then it is very easy to construct further more steps now so after completion of this so we know that there are different level of ic technology technology means how we are going to be integrating the number of transistors in the integrated circuit. So one is small scale integration, SSI. So the transistor number of transistors it is having 1 to 10. So if I take medium scale integration, it is having 10 to 100 transistors. If I take large scale integration, it is having 100 to 10,000 transistor and next one is the VLSI. In this VLSI, it contain more than 10,000 transistors are integrated. This is the integration level of the integrated circuit. But in our laboratory, most of the time we are using MSI standards. Correct. See, for example, the, the uh, IC1 which we are using for the NOT gate in the laboratory, see if I take IC 7400 so it is having 14 pin ic in that 14 pin maximum it is having six not gates six not gate presents inside it so in order to design the six not gate inside that ic probably so two to each means six six into two there are 12 transistor 12 cmos structure means obviously the two to transistor required each not gate so each NOT gate 2, there are 6, 6 into uh, 2, totally 12 transistors required inside this integrated circuit. So that's why MSI is more than enough for our the, the lab, uh, the ICES. 
So this is what a small introduction and the small overview of digital logic design. In the next class, we will discuss with the actual syllabus. In this actual syllabus, uh, we need to start with what is the truth table, how we are going to be defining the problem statement and with the help of problem statement, how we are going to be constructing the truth table and based on the truth table, how we are going to be constructing the Boolean equation. Once we construct the Boolean equation, how we are going to be synthesizing. Okay. Uh, and in your, in this syllabus, we doesn't have a Boolean algebra. So first I will introduce the Boolean algebra and we will solve some of the problems related to the Boolean algebra.